Hello everybody, my name is Trevor Slesky, owner of Monster Hobbies in High River, Alberta, Canada. Do you have a model car builder on your list this year for gifts? Well, here's a really cool idea, especially if your gift person actually owned a 1972 Corvette convertible back in the day, or maybe even has one now. This is the AMT Ertl 1972 Corvette. This one is from my own personal collection. But if you're looking for great model cars, don't forget to visit our website at www.monster-hobbies.ca. I'll leave a link to our model car section in the description below. So anyway, without further ado, I'm going to show this model to you. So let's head on down to my bench and I will open the lid and show you what's inside. And now we go all the way back to our GM showroom for 1972, where we get to see the final year of our 70 to 72 series Corvette. As you can see, this is a pretty cool model kit. It's another good one from AMT. Uh, we got a little license plate saying California Sunburst on the box top, which sadly is not in this kit, but it's pretty cool anyway. <laughs> got our rally wheels on here. Anyway, there they are. <laughs> Convertible kit. This, of course, is the 50th anniversary box. She made a 71, a 70, a 71, and a 72. I've reviewed all of them on this channel so far. This one came out in 2002 from RC2. And it's a skill level 2 kit. Ages 10 and up. Glue and paint is required, but not included in the kit. And as you can see in the build-up, we've got a picture of the interior, the engine, and the side profile of the car. There you go there. I do like that orange color on there. It's quite nice. Okay. So these kits are all basically the same. The 70 to the 72 Corvette from AMT. They just sort of changed the years on them. But that was true for GM as well. This, of course, is the final year for chrome bumpers, front and back, because in 1973, the standards for automobiles required the impact bumper. And in 73, it was only on the front. Unfortunately, there's no 73 Corvette model kit. Um, anyway, there's our body. i got a loose bag sitting here, because I opened this earlier in my life. There's our two little tops convertible and the hard top. I got two in here, but I think that might be from another kit, so I'll just slip those off the side, put them in the box later. There's our interior. It's a tub style, and our seats and seat backs. And get this nice little fold out here for the 50th anniversary, which I've shown in an earlier video. Our Corvette instruction sheets sheet. I guess it's one big piece of paper. There's the excellent detail here. Uh, now this Corvette, of course, came under the um, the crew that were making the models to compete with Tamiya Japan. Again, you can tell in the detail this is really nice. The only sort of downside is the interior tub. I don't know if that came from an earlier Corvette or what the deal was, but then they added in all these really high detailed awesome bits. Oh, I got a second one of these. I think I might have mixed some components, so... <laughs> anyway, there's our exhaust. And our carome. I almost don't need to open that bag. I could just rifle one out of another kit. There's our glass. Our tires. And rear taillights. And our decal sheet down here maybe I won't uncover till the end of the video. So what I'll do is I'll clear all this out of the way and we'll look at those instructions. Here's our instruction sheet for 1972 Corvette LT1 convertible. And as you can see, I do believe this is the same image as the 71 Corvette LT2, only they changed the numbers. But like I said, GM actually had this car run for three years, exactly the same. So I'm just going to zoom this back a little bit, just so we can open this up. There's our write-up, and what I'll do is I'll include this down below in our description. Okay, so this is a full-out, full-page instruction map, basically. 
and there's a lot of huge panels on this. So what I'm going to do is open up the instruction sheet and then zoom in on each panel. So in our first panel, we have our beautifully molded Chevy 350 engine. Now this is only half of the assembly. There's more to come. However, this is what we do get. And this is an excellent motor. You're going to see it in the parts as we examine that further on in the video. So we have our Chevy intake manifold here which it says to paint Chevy red. And then our cylinder heads, our valve covers, which are finned and plated. There's a little P saying plated. We have our exhaust manifolds, then our engine block left and right with the transmission molded in place, the oil pan and the front water pump. So when you build this kit, leave the valve covers off to the side Glue all these parts that say to paint red. Glue them all together as one big thing. And then paint that red. Scrape the paint off of here, where it's going to contact. Scrape the plating off the valve covers underneath, not the top. Underneath where it's going to glue onto here. And then glue them on. And if there's any exposed plastic, just take a very thin brush with your red paint and go over the top. Model Master used to make actual Chevy engine red paint, but I know you can get it at, well, up here in Canada, at Canadian Tire uh, as a separate spray can. So look for that. Panel 2 continues our build of our motor. So here's our plated ignition shield, and they needed this because the fiberglass cars had no place to ground. So, uh, on the body anyway, so they would have to ground it to the frame and they would also use this ignition shield as well, help in that process. So there's our plated air cleaner, our carburetor, you paint it silver and then use some uh, clear gold colors, like uh, the Tamiya, and you tint this. Or you can actually find a gold that's sort of similar, it's like a light auburn, or not auburn, but a light kind of gold paint. That glues to our intake manifold. Our starter, which would be painted black, will glue right there. And this is an air conditioner car, so we've got an alternator and our air pump. We've got our belts and pulleys going out here, and our fan. If you want this to not be an air conditioned car, um, you could cut this off here, but I wouldn't recommend it because you're going to have like a pulley just going straight up. <laughs> so, anyway, a pulley belt, I should say, just going straight up. So try to find a pulley from some other model kit that doesn't have the pump going up here. But overall, again, another excellent motor. Next up, we get into panel 3, which shows our chassis and the rear suspension going into place. This suspension came out on the 1963 Corvette and was still going strong in 72. We've got disc brakes in the rear. We do have the wheels are push-on type, so again, make sure it's nice and clear around these pegs because if there's any seam lines on here and you push that wheel into them, your wheels will never rotate. Anyway, our differential has a top and bottom. Also, we've got these rear spring and struts, which our shock absorbers will glue onto, and it all goes down to this highly detailed chassis. Panel 4, we complete the look with our front lower suspension our front uprights here and then our disc brakes going onto the uprights actually there are steering knuckles <laughs> anyway there's our front coil springs and we have upper a arms so all this goes together really nicely and looks perfect mount it all on your subassembled chassis note front wheels may be assembled to the uprights at this time step 10 no Corvette would be complete without, of course, its engine. So here we see the engine dropping in, the drive shaft going into the back. We have our inner wheel wells, our radiator expansion tank, radiator going in here, fan shroud, and the upper hose. All this goes together quite nicely. Panel 6 shows our exhaust going in. We have our frame cross member, which goes here, and the exhaust the mufflers saying to paint them silver and the pipes paint them steel. Panel 7 shows our interior going into place. We have the dashboard, steering column and steering wheel, the shifter and the bucket seats all mount into this tub. 
we have a decal here for our radio and it says see color combination chart to match interior exterior colors in step 13. Here in panel 8 it shows the interior step going into our body. First you want to put your windshield and rear view mirror in place and the firewall with our wiper vacuum can and our brake master cylinder and power brake booster all goes together and then pops in. There is a tab here which will lock into the body. It says paint hood, body and front pan before assembly. See the interior exterior color combination chart for color selection in step 13. Step 9 shows the body going down onto the assembled chassis. We have our lower pan, our hood and we've got the optional luggage rack two pieces in chrome. It says tape hood to body, remove tape after assembly. Carefully spread body sides apart, insert chassis front end first, and bow the back end into position. So that's how you get it all together. Step 10 shows our inner wheel, our pin, and our tire all getting put together into the wheel. And it says carefully remove the tire centers. In the rear we have the wheel back, the tire, and of course our front wheel. Panel 11, we have our choice of either the hard top or the convertible top. I kind of like to assemble these and keep them off to the side and, and uh, switch them out from time to time. The hard top, of course, would be painted body color. And the convertible top, either flat black or flat white. Then our wheels will be mounted on. We've got a side view mirror and our antenna, as well as our front bumper, will all be gluing in in this step. Step 12 shows our rectangular exhaust tips going on to the back here. It says to paint the recessed areas dark gray or even flat black. Cement to notch in body and exhaust pipe. So right into here. We've got our nice bumpers going on and our tail lights. And it says to paint the centers white inside lights only. So just these two. That would be for our backup lights. Step 13 is our decal placement. And again we get some of these signs which were in the 70 to 72 Corvette kits. Here's all our exterior colors and our interiors to match them up. Black, blue, red and sa saddle interiors. A decal for our owner's manual. It says cut out from cardstock to simulate owner's manual. And then we've got either decal 9 or 10 for our license plate. And then we have our LT1 stripes going on. And that completes our look at our 1972 Corvette instruction sheets. And I don't know about you, but I really want to check out those gray plastic components. Here we have our Corvette body for 1972. And this is really quite an accurate uh, body. You can see the nice detail in here with the waffle style grills, egg crate style grills, pardon me. The side marker lights and these nice little mounting posts for our front bumper. And then we've got our Corvette emblem in the front. The flip up headlights which are folded down. Be interesting to see somebody build these with them flipped up. Got a nice vent in here. And then our sun visors up top. Door latches and locks. The little locks for the uh, convertible top. The vents back here our gas filler cap with the Corvette emblem on them and then our Corvette logo across the back all again very nice there are some mold marks underneath and to confess I actually did start to sand this down there are some seam lines up on the coke bottle fenders and whatnot but they can easily be taken out again very nicely done I really do like the 70 to 72 series Corvette bodies from AMT. And if you think it looks good from up top, wait till you see what's underneath here. Look at this nice detailing on there. You even have the spare tire mounted underneath. All that nice detail on these little bits and pieces. Looks really great. The front uh, of the Corvette is awesome as well. Great for the suspension. Just beautifully done. There are some mold marks. A little high one right there needs to be removed. But again, pretty awesome stuff. Here we have our parts tree with our engine 
and our rear suspension components, as well as our exhaust pipes and the hood, which I forgot to show with the body. So just to be really quick, you can see just how nice this hood fits in. The gaps are not really too bad. So again, there's our hood with the little uh, detail for our LT1. There's our exhaust pipes, which are basically quite straightforward. They go in the kit really well. But here's our engine. And as you can see, the nice detail on the block. And our valve covers, our oil pan. There's our brakes and our boosters and little expansion tanks. Detail is nice. The rear axle, of course. Rear suspension. Nothing too bad for mold marks underneath. And the flash is really down to a minimum on this. So again, real nice work on this 72 Corvette. Here we have our final gray components for our 1972 Chevrolet Corvette. And here we have the undercarriage components as well as our radiator, uh, fan shroud, inner fender aprons, and our firewall. You do get some nice disc brakes here to go into your wheel backs, as well as the coil springs and the short little differential, and these front little pins. Here's our interior tub, as well as our bucket seats with the seat backs, our dashboard steering wheel steering column, and our choice of the two tops. So let's bring this up to our camera so we can see what's going on here. I'll just move these out of the way. Now look at this beautiful work in here. Nice detailing on that firewall. Um, it might be a little bit simplistic, but it's still very well done. You can see the rotors on our disc brakes, front and rear. Just turn this over here. Great uh, upper and lower A-arm suspension. Amazing coil springs right in there. Again, very nicely done. You can even see it's countersunk for these pins to fit in. I do believe that's our front wheels. Wonderful work. Maybe a little rough around the radiator here, but with a little bit of sandpaper, your number 16 hobby blade, you should be able to get rid of any imperfections. There are some mold marks in here, which you can kind of see. Again, easy to take out. Some in our inner wheel apron, but then our wheels are going to be in there, so those would be covered. But again, anywhere you, where you can see mold marks, get rid of them, of course, naturally. All right, let's take a look at our interior tub. Again, the door panels are molded in place, which is a little uh, not the greatest. There, our focus came back. <laughs> door panels are molded in place. You can see the three little storage areas behind the seat. These would lift up on the real car, and you can put some things underneath, as the Corvette didn't really have a trunk. Uh, there are some old marks back here. Your sandpaper should be able to get rid of those. Remember to cross sand just to get this area nice and flat. The three pedals are molded into the carpet here. So you've got your clutch, brake, and your gas. Now turning this over, you can see the nice detail on those Corvette seats. And then our dashboard here all the nice gauges. There is a little pocket for your maps and whatnot on the dashboard, which is correct for 1972. Again, you get the Rally three-spoke steering wheel and your column shifter. There were some components in here. They might have been the hood. Can't quite remember. Anyway, our final component is the two roofs. Now, this is the convertible canvas top, and this is the hard top. There are some little buttons on here at the tips, which would be chromed, as well as chroming around the windshield, or the rear window frame, pardon me. And that you can do with bare metal foil. And then underneath you've got some mold marks, which you can fill or scrape away. The ribs are inside the convertible boot, which is always nice. And the windows have the sunken area here, so the glass will come more flush to that uh, opening once you get the glass in. So that will complete our look at these great components here. Oops. 
Just kind of throw them all down. And now we'll take a look at our chrome. And here we have our groovy chrome. And I always like the chrome trees because in the future, everything is blah, blah, blah. You've heard that one in every video. <laughs> anyway, okay, so moving on here, you can see we've got our two rear bumpers and then we've got our front chrome bumper. Now, 1972 is the last year of this full front chrome bumper because in 1973, the federal regulations declared that you needed an impact bumper in the front. So if you ever see a Corvette on the road, and it's an old one, and you notice the chrome bumpers in the back, but in the front it's all painted and everything like that, um, and it's, you know, flared in and plastic in the front, I should say as well, on the real car, then you know you're looking at a 1973 Corvette. And in 1974, the chrome bumpers were dropped for the impact bumper in the rear, which again is covered by big plastic, which you'll see in further videos on this channel. Now, moving along, we have the rally wheels, which were pretty typical for most of the Chevrolet products back in the day. Uh, if you want to get rid of these and put wire wheels on, Take a look at our 1970 Chevy Impala review. Those wire wheels in there can be used on this car. Really dresses them up. Uh, Alright, so we got a side mirror, a rear view mirror, our square exhaust tips, our alternator, our uh, shield here for the distributor. Then we've got our valve covers, our air cleaner. I think this is a carburetor. We've got a gear shift lever in here, and we've got a two-piece chrome luggage rack. And you've got to cut this little piece out of here, just to make it look nice. So let's bring this up to the camera. You can see that nice egg crate grill with the square turn signal lamps in there. Totally accurate for 72. Yet, yeah, turning it over, it's a carburetor or a fuel injector body. Not quite sure which, but it goes under the air cleaner which is right there. Uh, overall, chrome looks really good. There's some old marks behind that bumper. Again, scrape them off. Paint this black inside, flat black, so when you're looking underneath, you don't just see this big chrome flash, which is not really accurate to the car. But again, the only chrome on here is, of course, to do a stock version of this car. So if you want to do something a little custom, you're going to have to outsource it from other chrome trees. But overall, the chrome plating on here is really nice, and this will make a nice shelf model. Next up, to keep our visibility on the road, we have, of course, our glass components. Here we have our front windshield, which is a nice little piece. As you can see, it's all separate and molded as one piece. It's not one of the ones with the little crossing bridges going to the back window. So, you know, it will fit nicely in your windscreen. Uh, now, these two pieces of glass, I do believe, are for the back window. Same as this one. Uh, what I'm trying to say is, this piece of glass was molded for both the hardtop version of the Corvette, as well as the two roofs for the convertible. So I'm not really sure which piece of glass is for which roof. Um, just by straight looking at it. However, when we get our roof sections together, we can always uh, test and fit them. Again, they're all molded separately, so this will look really nice in your car. And here we have our four tail lights. Remember, inside the two of these, you'll have to paint them white for our uh, reverse lights. But again, they do have the nice little ring detail inside just like on the real Corvette. So again, the glass is molded really nicely. It was put in a clear plastic bag, so that keeps it free from all the scratches. Friends, are you feeling tired as you go down the road? Well, don't worry. We have what you need for this Corvette kit, which, of course, are tires. <laughs> now, okay, so what we have here is Goodyear Polyglass GT... L6015 polyglass tires, which of course are quite old for AMT as far as their tires go. These of course are tried and true. They are good tires. They have a nice tread pattern on them. And with this kit, AMT has removed the central web 
that is inside here that holds the tires together in the mold process. So that's always nice. You could uh, use some white paint and a very fine paintbrush and just paint Goodyear on the top here as well as try to hit the polyglass which would be quite accurate for a tire of this vintage. These are true to the real Corvette tires, although you could always substitute them with the Firestone tires found in the 1966 Ford Fairline that have the nice groove inside them so that you can always paint the thin white wall in there. Last but not least, we have my second favorite part of all the model kits, which of course is the decal sheet. And if you followed our series and saw the 70 and 71 Corvette LT1 from AMT, my other reviews of course, you'll notice that this sheet looks pretty much the same. We have our black LT1 stripe, the no parking except for Bob decal, which you can mount on a sign. The Corvette and Chevrolet drive signs are white LT1 stripe, our little owner's manual, the radio face, and whatever else is going on in here. But you will notice that the license plate has changed to read 72 LT1 from North Carolina. So if you were to use this license plate on your three Corvettes, of course you would have one that said 70, one that said 71, and the final one here saying 72. Or you could use these nice 50th anniversary license plates, the Corvette ones. So again, a nice decal sheet, easy to use, and gives you some extra options to use in a diorama. And that completes our look at the AMT Ertl 1972 Corvette model kit. If you've built this model, we want to see your pictures over on our Facebook page, and I'll leave that link in the description below. How did you like this kit? Did you find that it went together well? Did you have any troubles with it? Again, let us know in the comments down below. Well, I hope you enjoyed that great video where I got to show you what was inside the 1972 Chevrolet Corvette convertible. This one, of course, is from my own collection, but if you would like to see what we have available right now on our model car hobby website, don't forget to visit us at www.monster-hobbies.ca. Well, I think that brings another great video to a close. It was real fun making it, and I hope you all learned something from it. If you have any questions, don't forget to leave those down in the descriptions below. And if you enjoyed watching these videos, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Pound the notification button down below so that every time I make a new video, you are the first ones to see it. If you'd like to shop with us at Monster Hobbies, don't forget to check out our web address, www.monster-hobbies.ca. Again, I'll leave it in the description below. If you want to support us on Patreon, visit our Patreon account, like these great people here have done. Thank you all for your support over on Patreon. I'll leave the link for that in the description below as well. Again, if you want to share some great stuff with us, do it on our Facebook page. And until next time, everybody, happy model building.